The Detroit Lions were one of the most surprising teams in football last season, and while they were expected to get better under Dan Campbell, it's safe to say almost nobody imagined they would be competing for a playoff spot on the final week of the regular season. The Lions have been disappointing their fan base for pretty much the majority of their entire existence, and claim some of the greatest names in NFL history, but have nothing to show for it. You don't believe me? Just look at Calvin Johnson or Barry Sanders for example. The Lions suffered mightily in their first year without Matt Stafford under center after they traded him to the Rams for Jared Goff. But last year, they totally flipped the script and had one of the hottest finishes to the end of the 2022 season. If you recall, when Week 18 rolled around last year and the Lions faced the Packers on Sunday Night Football, they would have made the 7th and final seed of the playoffs had they won that game when the Seahawks lost theirs. The Lions showed up and shut down Aaron Rodgers, where he threw a season-ending interception as his last pass as a Packer. But unfortunately for the Lions, the Seahawks won their game and they were narrowly eliminated from playoff contention. And we have to give credit where credit is due. We know Jared Goff's time in LA didn't end up how Rams fans would have liked, but there still was a big expectation for him when he was traded because of his first overall hype. No one expected him to go out and be a top 5 passing quarterback in the league, but he did do a great job when his number was called every week. And that attributed to much of the Lions success last year. Goff threw for over 4,400 passing yards and an impressive 29 touchdowns to only 7 interceptions. Amon Ross St. Brown was another bright spot in the Lions team last year as he led the team with 146 grabs for over 1,100 yards and 6 touchdowns. And don't forget, even though he had a, received a 6 game suspension for gambling, we get to see a fully healthy Jamison Williams hit the turf in 2023. Jared Goff is a good quarterback, but he isn't necessarily elite. He has two more years on his deal with the Lions, and after the 2024 season, he can become a free agent. That said, Goff isn't likely the long-term answer to quarterback. Looking at the future, the Lions drafted Hendon Hooker out of Tennessee, and he could fill in and start at some point in the future. Maybe that circumstance is Goff gets injured or plays below average. Whatever the case may be, currently, Hooker is dealing with his own injury, but once he is fully healed, he seems likely to get promoted to the backup role, and even though he wasn't drafted in the first round, there is a lot of upside and a lot to like about him. Maybe the best thing to like about him is that he tossed 5 touchdowns in an underdog win against Alabama, and they were all to Jalen Hyatt. We'll still give Goff his due time in a Lions uniform, but have that in mind for the possible future of QB in Detroit. Amon Ross St. Brown has gotten better every year he's been in the league, and his future looks to be that much brighter in 2023. I won't spend that much time talking about the running backs, even though they did trade DeAndre Swift on draft night, and I did let Jamal Williams walk in free agency. They did sign David Montgomery, who has been one of the most reliable physical running backs in the league the past few years, and they took a chance on Jameer Gibbs, 12th overall in the draft. Although he was taken pretty highly, as long as he can stay healthy, he was just shy of a thousand rushing yards as Alabama's lead back last year, and while also adding seven touchdowns. Khalif Raymond and Josh Reynolds both look to be nice depth pieces on the roster to step up as needed, and they proved that last year with their limited action. Brock Wright quickly stepped up after TJ Hawkinson was traded midseason, but the Lions tight end group got that much better when they drafted Sam Laporta out of Iowa. Laporta will likely split the starting role with Brock Wright. Laporta was the second tight end drafted after Dalton Kincaid and had 600 yards in each of his final two college seasons. And can we stop and just talk about the Lions offensive line for just a minute? Because that unit is scary by itself. Penny Sewell is an absolute monster at the right tackle position and even earned an 80.6 grade by PFF, which is pretty good on their terms. And Frank Ragnow has silently been among the top centers in the league and allowed just one sack in 2022. The Lions defense did rank last in points in 2022, but their unit is much better at this time this year than it was last year. There is a lot of fire behind that group, especially in Aiden Hutchinson. Hutchinson was so good in 2022 that he won the NFL Rookie Defensive Player of the Year award. Hutchinson dominated his fellow rookie competition with 9.5 sacks and 3 interceptions. And don't forget about all those other QB pressures and hurries he and the defense put on opposing quarterbacks every single week. Hutchinson is likely to have a Hall of Fame career and one of the best ever so long as he stays healthy and continues to play at the high level he has been doing his entire career so far. Kirby Joseph has become increasingly consistent and has become a little bit of a ball hawk last year as he tallied four interceptions and joining him in the safety room is Brian Branch out of Alabama. He was the highest drafted safety taken after 90 tackles and two interceptions in Alabama secondary last year. The other defensive draftee worth noting is Shaq Campbell whom the Lions drafted out of Iowa. Campbell was a first round pick 
18th overall, and that wasn't by mistake. Sure, maybe he was a second round pick at best, but the Lions saw something in him and didn't want to pass that up. A few of the things that likely led the Lions to draft Jack Campbell included the fact that he was one of the most athletic linebackers in the draft. In fact, he earned the highest score on the athleticism test in the pre-draft process. As a junior in college, he really broke out by tailing 143 tackles and a pick six. And as a senior, he posted dominant numbers with 128 tackles and 13 starts on his way to win the Dick Buckus Award, which commemorates the nation's top linebacker and won First Team All-American and Big Time Conference, Conference Defensive Player of the Year Award and Linebacker of the Year Award. But it's possible that the icing on the cake with Jack Campbell is that he won the 2022 William V. Campbell Award, which is essentially the Heisman for academic terms. The Lions made a lot of noise in the NFC North last year, but that was last year, and every year the league changes. And this year, the NFC North changed drastically. The threat of having to face Aaron Rodgers and the Packers twice a year is now over. And now those games are much more winnable than they were before. The Bears, while having improved their roster since last season, will probably only win about 7-9 games realistically. But don't sleep on the Bears either, because in a lot of ways, they are like the Lions. And as we've mentioned many times before here on the channel, the Vikings are coming off a 13-4 record and an NFL record of winning 11 one-score games, and we know the likelihood of that happening again is not very high. So we expect the Vikings will take a bit of a dive in 2023. The truth is that the Lions, Vikings, Bears, and Packers all really seem to have a fair shot at winning the NFC North this year compared to the years prior where it was mostly just the Packers or occasionally the Vikings or Bears. Now it's the Lions' turn to rule the jungle. But I wouldn't be doing the Lions justice if I failed to mention that they are led by not only one of the coolest coaches in the NFL, but one of the toughest ones in Dan Campbell. It has been impressive to see how Dan Campbell has been able to turn around the face of the Lions franchise for the better. He's a very team-oriented guy and knows what it takes to win. The Lions are entering the 2023 season with one of the better rosters that they've had in the past five years. And after going 9-8 last year, the expectation for the Lions is that they attain that level, if not higher, and become a playoff team. No one is expecting for the Lions to make a Super Bowl run or anything like that, but even making it to the playoffs and maybe even winning one game like the wildcard game when they're there would deem the Lions season as a success. The truth is, the Lions are not Super Bowl contenders yet, and who knows how long they will take to be one, or if they ever will be under Dan Campbell or within the near future. But we do know one thing for sure, and that is that Dan Campbell's Lions football teams are going to play their heart out every single week. They're going to play to the end of the snap. They're going to fight on every play. They're going to do what it takes to win. They're going to leave it all out in the field, because they know if they don't, Dan Campbell will bite their kneecaps off. That's all for this one. Stay blessed. Check out some of our other videos here on Endzone Football. And see you for later.